Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball, NBA, and NHL games. Spring training as well. Look ahead to today's games. NFL free agency moves that have happened over the last 24 hours or so. And my best bet of the day. Let's start in college basketball. We're going to go over last night's results. Weren't many games last night, though, because it's all conference tournaments and whatnot. Delaware State over Savannah State, 71-67, the MEAC first round, so that's an upset. Delaware State, 6-24, Savannah finishes at 11-20. Kevin Larkin had 19 for Delaware State, and Tyrell Harper had 15 for Savannah. Hofstra over Delaware, 78-74 in overtime in the CAA semifinal. Give credit to Delaware for... Making a comeback to force overtime. Hofstra 27 and 6. Delaware finishes at 17 and 16. Justin Wright forming 42 points, and Ithiel Horton had 21 for Delaware. Number 20, Wofford over UNC Greensboro, 70 to 58 in the SOCON final. Great win for Wofford, 29 and 4 as they sit patiently for their seat on Selection Sunday. UNC Greensboro, 28 and 6. Nathan Hoover at 20. Francis Alonso at 21. Summit League semifinal, North Dakota State over Western Illinois, 76-73. North Dakota State, 17-15, Western Illinois, 10-21. and Sam Grisella, 20 for North Dakota State, and Kobe Wester at 24 for Western. Mac first round, Central Michigan over Western Michigan, 81-67. Central, 22-10, Western, 8-24. Larry Austin Jr. at 24 for Central. Seth Dugan had 29 for Western. Ball State over Eastern Michigan, 61-43 in the MAC first round. So there's an upset for you. Ball, 16-16, Eastern, 15-17. Tajai Teague at 15 for Ball. Paul Jackson at 12 for Eastern. Wright State over Green Bay, 66-54 in the Horizon League semifinal. Wright State, 21-12. Green Bay finishes at 17-16. Billy Wampler at 18 for Wright. Sandy Cohen, the third at 13 for Green Bay. Akron over Miami of Ohio, 80-51 to in the MAC first round. Akron, 17-15. Miami of Ohio finishes at 15-17. and Lorraine Christian Jackson at 25 for Akron. Nike Sabande at 25 for Miami of Ohio. Northeastern over Charleston, 70-67, a CAA semifinal. This was a great game. Northeastern, 22-10. Charleston, 24-9. Sean Okis had 17 for Northeastern. Gerald Brantley had 18 for Charleston. Number one, Gonzaga over Pepperdine, 100-74 in the WCC semifinal. Great win for Gonzaga. Slow start, and they go Gonzaga and blow out their opponent. 13-2 on the year. Pepperdine, 16-18. Zach Norwell Jr. had 18. Colby Ross had 20 for Pepperdine. Iona over Monmouth, 81-60, as Iona wins the Metro Atlantic Tournament to get their auto bid. They've become like a mini dynasty in that conference. They just have owned it, Tim Clewis, in that program. 17-15, Monmouth finishes at 14-21. Asante just had 22 for Iona, and Diago Quinn had 13 for Monmouth. Northern Illinois over Ohio, 81-61. I'm sorry, 80 to 61. Northern Illinois, 16 to 16. Ohio, 14 to 17. Eugene Herman had 23 for Northern Illinois. Doug Taylor had 20 for Ohio. Summit League semifinal: Omaha over Purdue, Fort Wayne, 61-60. Great game. And Omaha goes to 21 and 10. Prairie View finishes at 18 and 15. Mitchell Hahn at 60 for Omaha. John Conchart had 13 for Purdue, Fort Wayne. North Kentucky over Oakland, 64-63 in the Horizon League semifinal. Obviously, the buzzer beater in this game by Drew McDonald. And this is March, as CBS Sports Network's John Rothstein likes to say. Northern Kentucky 25 and 8, Oakland finishes at 16 and 17. 
Drew McDonald, the therefore mentioned, 18 points, including that three-pointer. Javen Cumberland at 27 for Oakland. St. Mary's over San Diego, 69-62 in the WCC semifinal. Great one for San Diego comes to an end. They finish at 21 and 14. St. Mary's is now 21 and 11. Jordan Ford at 21 for St. Mary's and Isaiah Wright at 22 for San Diego. Today's game is a little bit of a bigger slate. 12 o'clock ESPN, Wake Forest against Miami in the ACC tournament. I did my ACC tournament podcast and that's already up. Miami is an eight point favorite. I'm taking Miami to win and cover because they're the better team than Wake Forest. 2 o'clock ESPN. Well, really, it should be 2.30. Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. Notre Dame's a two-point favorite. And yes, they're the 15 seed, but they're also favored. And Vegas has this right, I think. Notre Dame's going to win and cover. They're just a better team than Georgia Tech. They have better talent. And I don't see Georgia Tech winning here. 6 o'clock, MEAC first round, South Carolina State, Maryland Eastern. South Carolina State is a six-point favorite. Hey, give me Maryland Eastern for the upset. This is March. 7 o'clock, ESPN Plus, Binghamton, Vermont. America East semifinal, Vermont's favored by 17. They're going to win and cover. They got lucky because Stony Brook got knocked out early. American East semifinal, 7 o'clock ESPN plus Hartford and UMBC. UMBC is only laying a point and a half. I think that's a steal. They're going to win and cover. 7 o'clock ESPN U. Pitt, Boston College, ACC first round. Wrong team's favor here. Pitt's actually favored. They're the 14 team. They're favored. Boston College is the better team. And I think they'll win. And they'll obviously cover too because they're the dog here. CAA Championship, Northeastern against Hofstra. Northeastern is a two-and-a-half point favorite. Wrong team's favored. Hofstra's going to win this game. Fairleigh Dickinson, St. Francis, Pennsylvania in the Northeast Final. St. Francis, Pennsylvania is laying four-and-a-half. I think they'll win and they'll cover. Northern Kentucky and Wright State in the Horizon League Final. And to pick them, I'm going to take Northern Kentucky led by Drew McDonald. 8 o'clock ESPN Plus Sun Belt tournament underway. Arkansas State and South Alabama. South Alabama is laying four and a half. I am going to take South Alabama the win, but Arkansas State the cover. Sun Belt first round. Appalachian State and Yale Monroe. Yale Monroe is a whopping eight point favorite. That's big, but they're just better than Appalachian State. I'm going to take Yale Monroe to win, but App State to sneak in and get the backdoor cover there at the end. Miak first round, Morgan State, Coppa State. Morgan State is laying three. Again, I believe that the wrong team is favored here. I'm going to take Coppin State to cover and win. 8.30, SWAC quarterfinal. Alcorn State and Prairie View. Prairie View's laying a whopping 16 and a half. They're going to win and cover. They're just a very good team for that league. And Alcorn is not. Arkansas Pine Bluff and Grambling in the SWAC quarterfinal. Grambling's laying six. I'm going to take Grambling to win and cover. I'm going to say they win by 10. Southern and Texas Southern in the SWAC quarterfinal. Texas Southern's laying 12 and a half. Southern just beat Texas Southern the other day, but I think this is revenge. So give me Texas Southern to win and cover. Three more to go. West Coast final. St. Mary's against Gonzaga. Gonzaga's laying 14 and a half. That's a steal. They're going to win by 30 against an overrated St. Mary's team. Alabama State and Jackson State SWAC quarterfinal. Jackson State's laying six and a half. I'm going to take Jackson State to win, but Alabama State to cover. At 9 o'clock on ESPN 2. Summit League Final, North Dakota State against Omaha. Omaha's laying three. I'm going to take them to win and cover. I think Omaha is lucky to be here because Mike Dom and South Dakota State got upset in the first round. So Omaha with a lucky berth into the NCAA tournament. NBA, some interesting results last night for some teams and some interesting incidents as well. 
Cavs over the Raptors, 126 to 101. Good win for Cleveland. Although it kind of hurts their tanking a little bit. Bad loss for Toronto. Obviously, in this game, there's the altercation between Marquise Chris and Serge Ibaka, who are each going to get suspended after being ejected last night. Wizards over the Kings, 121-115. The Kings are starting to falter out of that West playoff race. Nets over the Pistons, 103-75. Brooklyn has a half-game lead now over the Pistons for the sixth seed in the East. Rockets over the Thunder, 118-106. That's nine in a row for Houston. Golden State coming up on Wednesday, potentially without Durant. Thunder over the Jazz, 98-89. The story of this game was that Russell Westbrook gets into another altercation with a fan. And then OKC still wins, though. First set of back-to-back home losses for Utah in a while, probably since November. And then the Clippers over the Celtics won 41-15 in a very impressive win for Doc Rivers' team against Doc Rivers' former team. As there's thick in the playoff race in the West, I think they're going to make it. Tonight you have the Knicks at the Pacers, the Cavaliers at the Sixers. That's at 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock you have the Lakers at the Bulls, the Bucks at the Pelicans, TMT, the Spurs at the Mavericks. The Mavericks are laying four and a half. I'm sorry, the Spurs are laying four and a half. Spurs are starting to grow on me a little bit. They're playing good basketball. Potentially no Luka for the Mavs. So they're trying to tank a little bit. So give me San Antonio to win and cover. I think they win by seven. And the Trailblazers against the Clippers. Portland's laying two and a half. I am going to take Portland to win and cover because I think the Clippers are going to have a letdown after that great win over Boston. The NHL. Lightning over to Maple Leaf, 6-2. Great statement win for Tampa Bay. Toronto, very disappointing loss at home. Islanders over the Blue Jackets, 2-0. A huge win for the Islanders. Brutal loss for Columbus. Flyers over the Sens, 3-2. Flyers are three points out of a playoff spot in the East, so they're back in it. Sharks over the Wild, 3-0. Good win for San Jose on national television. Blackhawks over the Coyotes, 7-1. Another great home win for Chicago. Coyotes, that was a brutal loss. And the Hurricanes over the Avalanche, 3-0. That was a big win for Carolina on the road. Tonight, you have the Stars at the Sabres. On NBCSN, you have the Capitals and the Penguins. That's a big game. I'm going to take the Penguins at home. They are the team that needs this game more. They keep themselves in the race in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Although, you could argue Washington needs this game too because they're battling the Islanders for first place. I'm going to take Pittsburgh at home because I think they're the more hungry team against their rivals. Bruins-Blue Jackets is a big one too. Blue Jackets playing for playoff lives. Bruins are playing for seeding in what will probably be a first-round matchup to the... Or against the Maple Leafs. Red Wings, Canadians at 7.30. Canadians need this one. The Coyotes against the Blues at 8 o'clock. The Blues need that one. Sharks and the Jets. Winnipeg's been faltering a little bit. And I think they'll probably win this game. San Jose's on the second of a back-to-back. 9 o'clock, the Devils at the Flames. Calgary needs to beat the Devils. And then the Predators at the Ducks at 10 o'clock. Nashville, show us what you got on the road on the West Coast. Now I'm going to go over some spring training things. Because we haven't done it in a couple days. Tigers over the Twins 3 nothing. And by the way, these are yesterday's results. And I just like to go over things that happen. Miguel Cabrera pulled off the hidden ball trick, which was pretty neat. It's very old school of him. Tyson Ross gets the win, four innings a hit, no one runs, no walks, and five strikeouts, so he lowers the spring year rate of 7.04. Kyle Gibson, three innings, five hits, no earned runs, no walks, four strikeouts. Astros over to Mets, six to three. 
J.B. Buscascus gets the win for the Astros. He's a highly touted prospect. Peter Alonso, highly touted prospect, gets an RBI triple. Jason Vargas started four innings straight, no one runs, no walks, three strikeouts, spring ERA at 1.08. Fomber Valdez, three innings, six hits, three runs, a walk, and a strikeout. His spring ERA is 7.11. Braves over the Pirates, 6-2. Kyle Wright gets the win, Nick Kingdom with the loss. Ronald Cunha homered. Josh Donaldson, RBI single. Nick Markakis, RBI single. Kingdom, 3-2, and two thirds inning, 6 hits, 5 at runs, 4 x 2 strikeouts. His spring ERA balloons up to 7.11. Kyle Wright, three innings, four hits, two and runs, a walk, and five strikeouts. His spring ERA is 2.25. Rays over the Phillies, 8 to 2. Bryce Harper's hit list in spring so far. Blake Snell, 1 0 in spring, gets the win. Vince Velasquez gets the loss. Andrew McCutcheon and Gene Sakura both homered. Blake Snell, two innings, no hits, no one runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Zero ERA in spring so far. Vince Velasquez, two weeks, five hits, five runs, two walks, four strikeouts. His spring ERA so far is 18. That's ugly. Cardinals over the Nationals, three to two. Jack Flaherty gets the win. Max Scherzer gets the loss. One Soto RBI single. Dexter Fowler RBI single. Paul Goldschmidt RBI double. Kurt Suzuki RBI single. Max Scherzer, five in the third inning, six hits, three runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. His ERA is a 5.93 on the spring. I'm not going to panic over Max Scherzer's ERA in the spring. He's going to have a good year, I think. Jack Flaherty, five innings straight, an earned run, a walk, and five strikeouts. His ERA is 2.77 this spring. Angels over the Rangers, 12-11. to 11. A lot of notable things from an offensive standpoint for both teams. RBI single, Joey Gallo. Sacrifice fly since Su Chu. Donald DeShields RBI single. Hunter Pence home run. Since the true RBI single among them. Matt Harvey, an inning in a third, five hits, four runs, a walk, and a strikeout. His spring ERA is 10.38. Shelby Miller, two and two thirds innings, two hits, and a run, a walk, three strikeouts. His spring ERA is 6.75. Brewers over to White Sox, eight to five. Julius Chasin gets the win of On Nova, the loss. Hernan Perez, RBI single. Ryan Braun, homer. Corey Spagenberg homer, Adam Engel homer, Aloy Jimenez RBI double, Nova three and a third innings, nine hits, five and runs, no walks, four strikeouts, his spring year raise a nine, Julius Chassin four and two thirds innings, a hit, no one runs, a walk, and three strikeouts, his spring year raise 1.04, Reds and Indians tied at five, Scooter Jeanette had an RBI double, Gassio Puig homered, Matt Kemp homered. So good day for the Cincinnati regulars. Anthony D. Sclafani pitched three in the third innings. Four hits and earned run a walk, two strikeouts. His spring year raise a two. Corey Kluber, three and two thirds innings, six hits, three and runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. His spring RA is a 7.36. I'm not going to panic about that because you never overreact to established major leaguers having poor spring trainings, and you never overreact to make or break players or players who have been inconsistent throughout their careers have great spring trainings. You never do that because it always comes back to bite you. Giants over the Dodgers, 4-1. to one. Justin Turner had a sack fly, RBI double. Evan Longoria. Joey Bart, the highly touted prospect, hit a bases clearing double in the top of the ninth as well. Chris Stratton, four innings, two hits, and a run to walk, four strikeouts. His spring ERA is 7.71. Rockies over the A's, 6-3. Mark Hanna had a two-run single. De Ian Desmond homered. Robbie Grossman sacrificed fly. Brett Anderson, three and a third innings, five hits, three runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. His spring year race, 6.75. John Gray, three and two-thirds innings, five hits, two runs, no walks, four strikeouts. His spring year race, 2.13. Royals over the Mariners, 5-1. to one. Heath Fillmeyer gets the win. Jorge Soler, RBI double. Jose Lobaton, RBI single. Alex Gordon homered. Soler also homered. 
Phil Meyer, three and a third innings, five hits, and earned run, two walks, three strikeouts. His ERA is 2.7. Wade LeBlanc. His spring ERA is an ugly 11.12. Guess he was supposed to start, but didn't because it doesn't show any stats. Rangers over to Royals, six to two in five innings. Both these teams had split squads. Yonder Mendez gets the win. Homer Bailey the loss. RBI double. Isaiah Kenner Falefa. Domingo Santana had an RBI double. I'm sorry, Danny Santana. Chris O'Hearn, RBI single. Chris Owings, RBI double. Nomar Moraza, sack fly. Logan Forsyth, two run double. Cristobal Cabrera, RBI single. Yamder Mendez, three and two thirds innings, four hits, two and runs, two walks, two strikeouts. This is spring ERA, 7.27. Homer Bailey, two and a third innings, seven hits, four runs, no walks, and one strikeout. His spring ERA is an ugly 10.8. NFL free agency, a lot has happened over the last 24 hours. We discussed Landon Collins getting that big contract from the Redskins, Antonio Brown getting traded, a lot of other moves, the Raiders, other big move with Trent Brown, Lions getting Danny Amendola and... Trey Flowers. Le'Veon Bell remains unsigned. Both Anthony Barr and C.J. Mosley are headed to the New York Jets. So that is our upgrades at the linebacker positions to go with Avery Williamson. So their linebacking core becomes a strength of their defense. I think the Jets also have some other moves in them as well. Maybe it's a secondary move. Maybe they sign Le'Veon Bell. We'll see. But they're using their cap space wisely on some good players. That I love the Mosley signing. Barr's a good player as well. Minnesota just couldn't afford to keep him because of all the cap troubles they're in. The big one from yesterday, Nick Foles signed with the Jaguars. Four years, $88 million, $45 million guaranteed. Good for Foles. Do I think Foles is an upgrade at that position? Yes. Do I think they become a playoff team? No, because the players around Foles, um, their offense aren't good enough other than Leonard Fournette. And I think Fournette could be trade bait, by the way. I predicted that he was going to get traded this offseason. The surprise player traded, I should say. And they obviously need receivers and a tight end. They have a good offensive line. Andrew Norrell's a good guard. And their defense is obviously pretty good, led by Jalen Ramsey and Calais Campbell. And so Foles obviously makes them better, but I don't know if this keeps them out of the basement from the division because Houston has a lot of cap space. So does Indy. Those two teams are both going to make moves. Tennessee's going to have a healthy Marcus Mariota. They re-signed Kenny Vaccaro yesterday, which was a big deal. He obviously did a good job in their secondary last year, so they're able to keep him around. And you also have the Lions giving Jesse James four years, $25 million. I think that's an overpay. The Packers sign Zadarius Smith. So they're bringing him in on the edge rush. Preston Smith's going to Green Bay as well. Four years, $52 million. And they're bringing in Adrian Amos, the former Bear. So that's three big defensive additions for the Packers. Sheldon Richardson is signing with the Browns on a three-year deal. That's a big signing. Thomas Davis to the Chargers, the ex-Panther. And then you have... Terrell Suggs leaving the Ravens to go sign with the Arizona Cardinals. One year, $7 million. So that's a nice signing, a veteran presence on that defense. But still, the big story is Le'Veon Bell, where is he going? Where are the Colts going to spend their money? Where are the Texans going to spend their money? Maybe on Bell. And now my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. We're going to go with a 12-team or all college hoops, NBA, and NHL. Vermont, Louisiana, Monroe, Prairie View, Texas, Southern, Gonzaga, 
the Sixers, the Pacers, the Bucks, the Nuggets, the Blue Jackets, I'm sorry, the Blues, the Canadians, and the Flames. About six to one, my payout, seven dollars and sixteen cents, wagering a dollar. That's it on the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the tournament games and NBA, NHL, more NFL free agency. Maybe we'll talk more about spring training stuff. We'll see. Depends on what happens with free agency and whatnot. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.